Hello, it's time for another book talk video. This time I'm going to talk about uh, this book that I just finished, The Traveling Cat Chronicles, written by Hiro Arikawa. This book was originally written in Japanese and it was translated into the English by Philip Gabriel. The book was originally published in Japan, um, in Japanese, in 2015, and the English translation was published in 2017. 2017. Now, that's really awkward. This is a light novel, and I believe this book is actually written uh, with younger audience in mind. I think this one would probably closely resemble the YA fiction except that it feels um, very Asian because back then when I was a secondary school student I actually saw a lot of books that have similar style and genres and themes like this one this book the the main idea is actually just human relationship basically this book the reason why it works so well is because it doesn't really try to be other thing it just aims to be one thing and that is to be as emotional as possible and the way it does that and i think it also um uh, it also pays attention to who the target audience is which are younger people younger adults it uses really simple language and in this case i think that tactic actually works really well because using simple language is really effective in conveying what the author wants to give to the audience which is just you know to maximize the emotional punch and when I read this book I got all the feels basically there were a lot of different kinds of emotions in me there were good ones sad ones all of them just got mixed with each other so this book is written from the perspective of a cat. The narrator is a cat. And I must say that there is also like a second layer of narration in here, which does not seem to be from a cat, but rather a third person omniscient because that narrator deals with the backstory of various human characters in this book. And I'm, I don't think that the cat, which is the main character in this book, actually knows about all of those backstories so i would say that this book actually has two uh two types of narration in here one is the first person point of view from the cat and the other narration is from you know the third person omniscient point of view so this book actually follows a cat who travels around japan with her, uh, his owner. The cat's name is Nana and the owner's name is Satoru. So there's a reason why this owner is actually bringing this cat traveling around and I think the cat actually knows about the reason before that and that reason is actually going to be revealed later in the book and you know spoilers ahead I am going to mention what that reason is. But basically, the book starts with the cat embarking on a journey across Japan with the owner, Satoru. And so what he kind of does is that he wants to meet up with some of his older friends. And he wants to see if any of them can take care of Nana for him. And he goes to them, meet, meet them one by one. And as we follow these characters in this novel, we also start to see what were the relationship between Satoru and those human characters, his friends that he met, and what happened in the past, how they became friends, and all of those things. And that is where um, a lot of the emotional feeling actually originates. You start to see how the relationship between Satoru and his each of his friends that he meets develop afterwards after each of the meeting he would decide that if they are suitable or not to take care of Nana basically he's looking for a new person to take care of his cat Nana throughout the course of this novel Nana actually doesn't do a lot there isn't much character development when it comes to Nana as a character 
Nana mostly just observes as a passive uh, narrator, a passive character who just happens to be in the background observing what goes on between Satoru and his um, and other human characters. So most of the actions are actually carried out by the human characters in this book, even though uh, I said that Nana is a main character. So now for the most spoilery part of the book, the reason why Satoru actually goes around Japan to find a new or someone to take care of for Nana is that um, he is going to die. Apparently he has cancer and it was already at a late stage and that's why he's looking around to see who can take care of Nana for him after he dies. And it is actually kind of hinted around in this book. It wasn't explicit, explicitly mentioned until the end, but from the beginning, you already start to see bits and pieces of this being hinted at, especially since the narrator is a cat, Nana, and he constantly, well, I wouldn't say constantly, but uh, from time to time, he would mention that there was this smell about his owner that, you know, something is going to happen, and that is actually like a really strong hint that, you know, when, whenever uh someone talks about or whenever some animal talks about some sort of smell emanating from a person there is usually a chance that it implies that the person is dying i think this is a very common trope so like i said what i really liked about this book is that it doesn't really try to be like um technically great um it doesn't try to be uh, pretentious, it doesn't try to use really um, sophisticated or complicated language or words. Instead, it just use really simple language to convey something that is really raw and I think it, it was really effective and I really like that. Basically, the end product is, you know, the reader getting really emotional and if you're the type of person who easily tears up, I think this book would probably make you feel that way and therefore that's why I gave this book five stars because I really did enjoy this book I really loved it it has been a while also since I read in a YA Asian fiction so that's it for today those are my thoughts on Hiro Arikawa's The Traveling Cat Chronicles and I'll see you again next time in a different video. So until then, I'll see you again and bye-bye.